It's time for the AFL round number 10, and that means the Sir Doug Nichols round. As always, let's see how we did in round nine, and I must say, it did not start well. Now, on Thursday, it was Carlton versus the Ds, and I predicted the Ds to win by 13. However, it was a very, very tight one, and they lost by one point to Carlton. So, it was 77 76, a very, very tight finish indeed. And the underdogs in this game, according to you guys, they won. So I get absolutely nothing for that. Friday was Geelong versus Port. And another very, very tight one. And yeah, certainly the underdogs won this one. Not many people predicted Port to go away to the litter box and beat Geelong because Geelong have been playing so well and although Port have been playing well as well uh, the litter box is a little bit of a fortress and I did Geelong to win by 16 nope because Port won by 6 so absolutely nothing for me there as well not many people got points in that game so we then moved on to the Dockers versus Sydney Swans uh, I think most people predicted once again predicted Sydney Swans and it was it was sort of how much of a margin were the Swans going to win by because the problem is with Fremantle is you don't know how good their defense is going to be they don't really score many but they are quite defensive I did say I think that the Swans would be able to unlock that Dockers defense in which we did fairly comfortably to be fair so we went away to the Optus and destroyed the Dockers. I did Swans to win by 30. We actually won by 48. So at least I do get a point. Unfortunately, not a close score. But I don't think many people got a close score this week for that game. Then Saturday comes around and it was Hawthorne versus Saints. And guess what? Yes, if you guessed that I got it wrong, you are correct. <laughs> Once again, the team that the least amount of people predicted to win, they won. This is how crazy the AFL is this year. I did St. Kilda to win by 23. They actually lost by five. So I get absolutely nothing. Uh, most people that went for Hawthorne get that extra half a point for the score as well. And a few people uh, got it for Saints as well. So well done to you if you did that. But it did up it did improve a little bit okay Essendon versus Giants I just had that feeling um, with certain players out for the Giants that Essendon could come away with the win here I did Essendon to win by six I thought it'd be a very tight game they actually won by 20 so they did really really well um, we're having a theme here where the underdogs are winning so I get one point for the win. Nothing for a close score though. I just missed out by about two points-ish, I think. Then Gold Coast, they had an easy opposition in North. I just do not see where a win is coming from from them. Uh, I did Suns to win by 34. They actually won by 68. It was a very, very convincing, easy win. Um, a very big score for them. So I get the point for the win. Whoever those 3% of people were, I feel for you. I feel for you because it's another one where you think, oh, maybe this is a game North could win. But they didn't. They let you down. Then Richmond versus a Western Bulldogs. Now, this is a game that, like, again, most people predicted and actually got it right. Richmond are, wow, they are poor at the moment they're a shadow of what they could have been um a lot of people have said predicted richmond to do okay this year but it's not looking that way at all because they are sat second from bottom i did bulldogs by 25 but actually they won by 91 that is embarrassing if you're a richmond player um that is embarrassing to lose by that that is is that the biggest win so far this year Possibly, possibly. So I get one point for the win, nothing for a close score. No one got even remotely close to a close score. Sunday, we then had the Collingwood Pies uh, versus West Coast. And 
Yeah, once again, there is a big majority here. And annoyingly, I wasn't that far away from a close score. ID Collingwood to win by 44. They actually won by 66. Huh. <sighs> Annoying. I needed those extra points. So, one point for the win. Nothing for a close score. 3% uh, went for West Coast for some, some mad reason. Then the last game was the Crows versus the Lions. And this was, well, a draw. It, uh, Brisbane almost had it. They almost had it, annoyingly. Um, and then Crows, they almost had it. It was so, so tight. And, um, yeah, it was a draw, and I think it was a fantastic contest. It, it was a fantastic contest, and it deserved to be a draw because they were very, very evenly matched. Now, luckily for me, I do get half a point. I did Crows by eight, so I get half a point at least. Uh, um, I've had better weeks. Let's see how everyone is doing. And RPN24 is still at the top. He's solid up there. Um, we have some real big movement, actually, this week. Up five is Metal King. Uh, Yin is down two. Oh, it's the slide beginning. Jackson, last year's winner, is now up 15. Up, down, up, down. Started slow, but is broken into the top, top 10. Amazing. Uh, K-Power up 10. Limus, Limoz down five. Up 35 with the golden hat. We don't even need to go searching for it this week is DJD. Well done, mate. That's incredible. Uh, Rach up 12. Down 11 is Judo Ezra. Uh, up 11, think outside the square. Up 18 is Aussie Austrian. Down 12, Dark Soul. Uh, up 17, Sky Marie. Well done. We got some down 7, Banana Jojo, Naked Meeple. Up 16. Down 18 is Ragnarok X. Up 24 is Bisk. Well done. Down 12, Van H26. Uh, Blau. Blue. Blue Bull. We'll say it's that. Up 20. AFL Legend up 16. Down 17. Cobra Dell. Uh, I want to see where I am. Azimus down 22. Whoa. Ashley Smith gets the wooden spoon this week. And up. 27 is Brycey B, up 19 is Outback Recluse, and there I am, down one place. Rob Reacts in 81st position. Who else have we got? Let's see, I'm going to show everyone's position. We're going down, we're going down, down, down. There's less movement down the bottom, it seems. There isn't quite as big of a movement swing, and that is how... We finish this week in the league. So the Doug Nichols round, we start on Thursday and we are at the TIO Stadium in Darwin. It is Gold Coast Suns versus Geelong Cats. Now, Gold Coast Suns come off a, a decent big win, but it was against North. So I don't think you can really, I don't think you can count it towards form, really. They're playing against the Geelong side who's gone and lost two in a row. They are still in second place, but... That is two big losses for them. Uh, who do I think is going to win? I think Cats should come back into this. Um, they, you, I can't see them losing three in a row against a side in the Gold Coast who are... They are very up and down, literally. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So, yeah, I, I just cannot see past the Cats winning this. They are. They should be too strong. So... Maybe being, you know, up in Darwin, a little bit different temperature, altitude and all that. I don't know. That's no, not altitude difference, is it? You know what I mean. Um, let's go with a Cats win by 10. Yeah, I think that's fairly reserved, but I think that's fair. I think that is fair. So we then go on Friday, the SCG, Sydney Swans versus Carlton. Now, this is a fairly tough contest, but Sydney are on incredible form. We have lost one game earlier on in the season, and we have looked up since. Our attacking play is brilliant. Defensively, we are solid. Midfield is creating so much as well. And Carlton started off very well, but they've shown the cracks recently and are currently in seventh at the moment. 
Um, in my opinion, I think Sydney are going to win. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a massive win because Carlton have that knack of keeping games close and tight, which is fair play to them. Um, yeah, I, there's no real massive injuries to speak of, so I don't think that's going to be a massive influence. So let's go at home, Sydney to win by six. Uh, it should be fairly tight, I think, and it should be a very good game with the Bloods winning, hopefully, fingers crossed. Saturday starts with a game at the MCG with Collingwood versus the Crows. Crows, they have started picking up. They are moving up the table now in 12th place. Collingwood, they are in 8th place. That is that, they, they're on really good form, but they are having to chase the pack now because of their poor start to the season. Who do I think is going to win? It's a tricky one. Um, Collingwood don't lose very often at the MCG. So I think this is going to be... this. Oh, it should be, yeah, I think it should be a, a fairly decent, convincing win by Collingwood. The, the game against the Crows, it was only against Brisbane who are, let's be honest, they're not doing the best this year, are they? Um, yeah... I think I'm going to go with a fairly big win for Collingwood. Let's do a Collingwood win by 30. Yeah, by 30. I think they should see, see Crows off. Crows, I don't think, have had that attack. I know it was 1990, but I still... Yeah, I, I don't have faith in them, unfortunately. I really don't have faith in them. Then Giants Stadium in Sydney, Giants versus Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs are sat in 11th and GWS, who did start off very well, slipped recently. They are in fourth place at the moment. Uh, yeah, I think Giants should win comfortably. They should have this. They should have enough to beat the Bulldogs, I think. Giants have played fairly exciting football and I think it's been fairly attacking as well. They've not normally been short on goals and Western Bulldogs, I think they're just average this year. I, I, I was thinking they may actually do slightly better, but they haven't had the consistency uh, and they just haven't shown dominating performances. I know Giants have slipped up the last couple of weeks, but... They're at home now, and I think it should be a fairly, fairly confident win. So let's go Giants by 25, 25. I think that's a, we'll see. I, I say it sounds like a good one. Of course it does, otherwise I wouldn't pick it. Then Gabba. We're at the Gabba for Brisbane versus Richmond, and there should surely, 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 guys, only be one winner here. Richmond just cannot by a result they got that one win but it was a win that they should win many many weeks ago now brisbane oh, they're so up and down we had the whole thing of they don't lose very often at the gabba and that didn't rain very true earlier on in the season but with the opposition they've got i don't think we should be too worried about brisbane getting a win here i'd be very 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 shocked if the Tigers managed to get anything out of this. So, a big one. A big one. Lions by 52. There you go, 52. See if, see if that extra two, two points makes the difference. Marvel Stadium is St. Kilda versus Frio. And this may be the trickiest, maybe the trickiest pick of the week. Because look at this. Both teams, uh, form is almost identical. Uh, Saints are currently in 14th. Frio, yes, they are up in 9th, but they haven't necessarily shown much more. But I think Frio have shown more than Saints. It's both teams, it's, it's do they turn up? Both teams have stayed on the bus half the time. That's the problem with their performances. This is a very, very difficult one to call, but I think I'm going to go with a 3-0 win. I think 3-0, yeah, I, I think, I just think Saints, 
have been that poor, they've never, they've never really looked dominant or confident in any of their games. So let's go with a 3-0 win. I'm going to go by 10, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go with an away 3-0 win by 10. But that is a very, very difficult one to call. Sunday, and we start at Marvel Stadium. Essendon versus North. And can we see any other result? You, we know, right? We know what we're thinking. Yeah? Uh, Essendon are going to win this. Essendon are on really, really good form now. And they're in, in third place. Essendon are doing fantastic this year. Um, I don't think they're going to win win the actual flag at the end. But they are, they are doing really, really well. And they are getting the performances... North, what can I say? What what can I say about North? I really want them to win, but they're not, are they? I'm going to go with an Essendon win by 65. That should be big. That should be enough at least to get... That should be enough to get a close score. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. But there is no other... I can't, what else can you say about this? Nothing. Then Adelaide Oval, Port versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, three wins in their last four. Uh, Port, they haven't necessarily been ridiculously consistent, but they did come off a fantastic win last week, which I didn't necessarily see them getting. But yeah, um, on paper, Port should win. They're at home. Hmm... Yeah, I think Port have got to win this at home. They, they should. Uh, let's go with the Port win by forty. Yeah, I think I think they're going to go rampant on on Hawthorne. Hawthorne, you know, they are now s sort of sneaking up the table, but they're still going to be down there. And Port, they have the ability to score goals, right? Port have the ability to score goals. Hawthorne do not have the ability to resist them. So, a 40-point win for Port. And then the last game at the Optus is West Coast versus Melbourne. Now, does it really matter that Melbourne lost their last game? No, it does not. Because Melbourne... Yeah. Melbourne are going to come across to Port... Uh, to, to Perth. Uh, and they are going to win quite easy. Yeah. That's all I've got. Again, it's very similar to... It's very similar to the, the North game that... I just don't see anything. There is... I know, I know uh, West Coast got a couple of wins recently, but... And since then, nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's lacklustre. Um, they've got no real pace, no real no real drive, no no energy about them. Whereas Melbourne are not going to win... Are not going to lose two games in a row, I don't think. They're going to probably... Mm, potentially get back into the top four here. I think it should be a big win. So let's do Melbourne by 38. There you go. Melbourne by 38. So this week's picks are as followed. We've gone Geelong by 10. Swans by 6. Come on, Bloods. Uh, Pies by 30. Giants by 25. Lions by 52. Yeah, 52. Frio by 10. Essendon, a massive one by 65 port by 40 and the d's by 38 we've got a lot there that are potentially very very big score differences indeed well thank you once again for joining me this week with our tipping this week it didn't feel like there needed to be much analytical analysis right because um i don't think there's ridiculous amounts of injuries extra this week um and notable notable things to talk about that may affect the game this week so i think the toughest one so far to pick uh was probably saints versus frio that uh, that is that's a tough call that is a really really tough call but i think a lot of the others were fairly simple to call it's just whether or not those teams actually turn up we we saw what happened last week with a lot of the favorites not performing so we'll see how it goes this week in the Sir Doug Nichols round. Thank you so much. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.